Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 256, The Law of Moses v. The Torah of Perfection, Part 3. The podcast objectives are reveal the only belief system that offers life in these last days, revisit the parallel nature of the nation of Israel and their belief systems, reveal the seed of promise, and analyze how many were guarded under the law. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. The only belief system that offers life. Now, we concluded the most recent podcast by posing a key question. That question, how did those who died under the law and yet were of the faith of Abraham obtain salvation? Before answering this pivotal question, allow me to briefly recap everything we have learned thus far in this mini-series, after which we will continue our evaluation of the Law of Moses and the Torah of Perfection. We began by revealing the Torah of Perfection is the belief system by which the renewed nation of Israel is established. In this order, the Torah of perfection is the manifestation of the Father's will in our lives in these last days and confirmation that we are both under the restoration and qualified to obtain the seal of Elohim. By definition, the Torah of perfection is the universal facet of the Father's will. At a high level, it is a belief system which facilitates our assimilation into the spiritual image and likeness of Yahushua Messiah, i.e. the perfect man whose footsteps we are to follow. Now, with specific regards to these last days, our adherence to the Torah of perfection is required for us to obtain the seal of Elohim. Here lies the inflection and in one of the most critical takeaways concerning the current season we are in. I advise you to never forget it. You cannot obtain the seal of Elohim without adhering to the Torah of perfection. And without the seal of Elohim, you will not be guarded during the great distress and tribulation, which is coming to destroy the earth, beginning in the next season. Per the timeline below, we see that the sealing of the set apart ones is followed by three consecutive seasons of terror destruction, and death. These three seasons, i.e. the sifting of the nations, the destruction of Mystery Babel, and the day of Yahuwah, constitute the time of great distress. Reason being, the word of truth confirms these three seasons will consist of the greatest amount of distress and tribulation the world has ever known. Now, if you were with us during the 100 level courses, 
then you understand how the world's population will decrease by approximately 80% during these three seasons. My dear friends, that is more than 6 billion people, all of whom will die for one simple reason. They did not obtain the seal of Elohim while they had the chance. Lo, this speaks to the vast importance of the Torah of perfection, for it is the only belief system that offers life in these last days. A stumbling block to deceive many. From there, we executed a thorough evaluation of the law of Moses, namely because many who heard the restoration message were deceived into regressing backwards into following the law, a fixture of our past, but not an independent factor in our future. As I said before, this regression was instigated by the enemy. I call it Satanic Errors and Lies 101, a sordid playbook of twisted doctrines which contain some fraction of truth, but it also contains errors and lies. And thus, it is as poisonous as it is compromised. For that reason, we use the word of truth to understand the purpose of the law of Moses. And we came to the following conclusion, which I will offer as an interest point, as it is a key matter we must not forget. The law of Moses was our schoolmaster, i.e. our teacher. It was designed to prepare us to receive the Torah of perfection, such that we would succeed in our assimilation into the spiritual model of Yahushua Messiah, the causer of our salvation. On this wise, the law provided us with a fundamental yet powerful understanding and appreciation of sin and its residual defects. Furthermore, we came to see how the law of Moses in this day has been made obsolete. My dear friends, this is not my word. This is how the Father designed it. And seeing as it is another powerful occasion, I will restate it as an interest point. The law of Moses evolved into the Torah of perfection. In effect, the former was fulfilled by the latter, and they exist in this day as one. We know this to be true because the evolution of the law of Moses and the Torah of perfection parallels the correlating evolution of the nation of Israel, which we thoroughly analyze during our lessons on the restoration. And yet, seeing as this is another critical matter, I will restate it in the form of another interest point. The former nation of Israel experienced spiritual and physical death due to their rejection of Yahushua Messiah and the fact that they were responsible for the shedding of his innocent blood. Yahuwah Elohim knew this would happen from the beginning. It was all part of his master plan to save a remnant of his creation, such that they would be qualified to obtain everlasting life in the new heaven and the new earth. Notwithstanding, to carry out this master plan, he needed a vehicle. He needed a new nation for the faithful men and women from the former nation to transition into. Enter the renewed nation of Israel. Lo, here lies the connection vis-a-vis -vis 
the law of Moses evolved into the Torah of perfection to provide the renewed nation of Israel with a system of beliefs that had the power to save them, being established upon the ministry of Yahushua Messiah, who is, again, the causer of our salvation. This is precisely why the law of Moses is outdated. It is antiquated because it, within and of itself, serves no purpose in the Messianic age. The scriptures testify to this, and yet the enemy is using it as a stumbling block to deceive many. For although they may have been called, there is no scenario of life where they are chosen. The Seed to Whom the Promise Was Made Now, this brings us back to the question I asked to initiate this podcast, vis-a-vis, -vis, how did those who were of the faith of Abraham, who died under the law, obtain salvation when there is no salvation in the law? Here again, Shaul addresses this question in his letter to the Galatians. Galatians 3 22 to 23 reads, But the scripture has shut up all mankind under sin, that the promise by faith in Yahushua Messiah might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were being guarded under the law, having been shut up for the faith being about to be revealed. As this is a pivotal inflection within this powerful passage, I will, by the Spirit, break down these verses to ensure you understand what Shaul is revealing, also by the Spirit. First of all, Shaul reveals, but the Scripture has shut up all mankind under sin. What does this mean? Quite simply, it means the scripture, by the law of Moses, has confined all mankind to all the prescriptions of sin. In doing so, death, by the law, passed upon all mankind, for not only have we all sinned and fallen short of the esteem of Elohim, but the wages of sin is certain death. Notwithstanding, Shaul continues saying that the promise by faith in Yahushua Messiah might be given to those who believe. Here lies the inflection, which I will capture in the following line. Consider it faithfully, for it is the foundation of our salvation. Although the entire creation was under a curse, Due to the damaging effects of sin, Elohim, from the beginning, had established a way of escape through faith in his word. This word, then, was conveyed to Abraham via the promise, who believed in the gospel, i.e., the good news of Yahushua Messiah, before he was revealed to the world in these latter days. That's right, my friends. The gospel, i.e. good news of Yahushua Messiah that we have come to understand via the new covenant was conveyed to Abraham before the law was ever given. The reason why this is often difficult to see is because the translators of the text during the times of the Gentiles, were not filled with the spirit of Elohim. Thus, their translations were at best limited to their paltry intellect and at worst, tainted by their ample ignorance. Be that as it may, we, the renewed nation of Israel, can clearly see Yahushua Messiah 
all throughout the Old Covenant. We see how the good news has its origin in the beginning, being found in the leading chapters of Genesis. You don't have to take my word for it. My dear friends, Shaul confirms in Galatians 3.8 that Elohim announced the good news to Abraham, who in turn announced it to his offspring. This is why the former nation of Israel had for hundreds of years been looking for the Messiah. Even when Yochanan the Immerser, a.k.a. John the Baptist, came on the scene, they asked him constantly if he was indeed the Messiah. It's because they knew salvation would come through Yahushua, Messiah, for he is the seed to whom the promise was made. They would find life. Now, it is true that our understanding of the good news of Yahushua Messiah is more involved and intimate than perhaps those who are under the law. This is why I aforementioned the word was conveyed to Abraham. And yet, regardless of how involved or intimate their knowledge was, we know Yahushua Messiah is the word. And thus, our degrees of knowledge on this wise do not matter. For all who believe in him should not perish. For by faith, we, like Abraham, shall receive the promise, and we shall have everlasting life. Notwithstanding, our reception of this promise cannot occur until Yahushua Messiah fulfilled the leading frame of his ministry. That is, his birth, his life, his sacrifice, and his self-resurrection. Here is why. Our belief in Yahushua Messiah is not limited to our understanding of who he is. Rather, it extends to the great magnitude of his work. This work includes reclaiming all power in heaven and earth, and not only transferring it back to the kingdom of heaven, but also transferring this power to the children of Elohim, i.e. the renewed nation of Israel, to serve as the source of the aforementioned assimilation. Here lies the key. The faith, as we understand it, via the power of the promise, was not activated until Yahushua Messiah completed the leading frame of his ministry. Therefore, those who were of the faith of Abraham and yet under the law had no immediate path to salvation. Yahuwah Elohim knew this, and thus, true to his master plan, he made a way for these individuals to be kept, to be guarded from the eternal curse of sin until the faith was revealed and activated, again, after the leading frame of Messiah's ministry. This is why Shaul reveals we were being guarded under the law. This speaks to the power and the purpose of the law of Moses and why it is of great value when used lawfully. Here is how. The law of Moses not only exposed sin to the condemnation of those who did not fear Elohim, and did not possess the faith of Abraham, but it also included a way of escape for those who did fear Elohim and those who kept the faith. In this order, those who were under the law, but of the faith of Abraham, 
had an escape clause when it came to the curse and the penalties of death. And these were guarded, they were protected, they were sealed, and in the end, they would find life via their faith in Yahushua Messiah. Glory to his name. Now, here is the final word. The word is sure for every man to trust our creator and believe in his plan. Upon considering the high level points I have shared in this three part series, evaluating the law of Moses against the Torah of perfection, at least one thing should be clear. This is the only progressive accounting of these two belief systems. Most importantly, it is parallel to the progressive evolution of the nation of Israel, and that is the most critical requirement. My dear friends, what we are witnessing in these last days is the climax and the conclusion of the Father's master plan to save a portion of his creation that he deemed worth saving. And the process by which Yahuwah Elohim is saving us is the most amazing thing any of us have ever seen. It is the most wonderful occasion our world will ever know. And it is all established upon the Torah of his only brought forth son. Yahushua, Messiah. At the end of the day, the choice is yours as to what you should believe, here or ever. As for me, all I can do is give thanks to Elohim for allowing me to see his master plan come together. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast in Times 256, The Law of Moses v. The Torah of Perfection, Part 3. And the next podcast is entitled, In Times 258, The Favor of the Nation of Israel. I will post this podcast on Monday, February 5th, 2024. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the Spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch. Continue to pray. Continue in fasting. And most of all, continue to be focused. For the end is coming. The end is near.